This is the Central Coast Wave. In today's show, we'll take a close look at wildlife. We'll talk about an interesting option to keeping kids busy. And much more. Welcome to Central Coast Wave. I'm Patty Lesama. This time we'll go on a great experience with wildlife here on the Central Coast. We'll meet uncommon animals that have been made famous in movies, TV, and magazines. Let's start the show and see what it's all about. Hello friends from the Central Coast Wave. Today we have a great adventure with animals from the wild. Come with me and I'll show you more. Our adventure today begins at Wild Things in Salinas. This animal facility offers a young and old and up close and personal fun learning experience. Most of the animals we'll meet today have been in the TV and entertainment environment. Well, that's how it all started. Um, I had a very special lion in my life at that time, and he was kind of a corner market. There weren't many lions in the industry that could do what he could do because of his safety and his, his uh, patience with people. So. Um, he kind of kicked off our film and television career and he worked on everything at that time. He was the MGM lion, he was the Dreyfus lion, he was um, the live model lion for Lion King. Um, he did the Cadbury commercials, he worked with Michael Jackson, he, he, we just did a lot of things in our career together. Our tiger Kolar is probably still the most photographed tiger uh, in the history of still photography. Mr. Summit explained how he gathered all of these lovely creatures. Uh, the animals come from all sorts of places. They come from uh, zoos sometimes, they come from breeders. A lot of them come from people who had them as pets oh. and realized that they didn't make good pets and oh. needed to find a home for them. So every animal has a different story, but some I actively seek and purchase from breeders across the country. And we started meeting the animals. This is Frank. Frankie is a African spurred tortoise and he's a big part of our educational program because he's a good example of the animals we get from people who thought they would make a good pet. And what happens is they buy these things from a pet store and they're this big and they're, they're cute, they're tiny, they're easy to take care of, but they grow into this. And when they grow into this, they're very, very difficult to keep in your home. Uh, they're very messy and they're very destructive. So uh, they can take a beautiful backyard and turn it into this. Something this slow? <laughs> right, right, they'll just dig up the entire yard. So we, right now, this is one of those animals that we get countless calls for mm -hmm. to uh, get rid of. And we can only take so many and then we try to find homes for the others elsewhere. But um, that's why these are such an important part of our educational program as far as teaching people not to buy the pet but to buy the pet that it's going to turn into and, and, and getting people to, to ask those questions before they run out and buy something that's cute and fits in a fish tank in the beginning. Along with these interesting facts, we learned that safety is very important no matter what animal you're working with. We have to be careful. Oftentimes people ask if an animal bites and uh, we try to teach people that every animal bites. If it has a mouth, it bites. Um, some bite more seriously than others. A, a parrot can take a finger off. An animal like this could take a finger off. Um, all animals bite. And the best thing to do is simply stay away from the biting end. So we try to teach kids whenever they're interacting with animals, the first thing should be to assume it will bite. Therefore, you won't get bitten. So we are here with Nadia now. She is two and a half years old. And now you work with her every day or, or how does this work? Just about, she's part of our education department so she'll travel with us to schools. We also take her up to the bed and breakfast and just like other animals, she was raised with us as well. She's a Siberian lynx. She's actually the largest of the lynx family and they can weigh up to around 80 pounds. Um, with her training, it's mostly just to behave. Um, you know, walk on a leash. That could be very hard to do with a cat. Um, not to jump, not to bite, not to scratch, stuff like that. Just all the simple basics. So you mentioned that training, but how, how, do, how do you work with her? How does that work as far as training her? What do you do? Well, we did get her as a baby, and so she was raised and hand-raised by us like a lot of our other animals. So growing up with her, just being a part 
part of her family is, is probably the most important so that we can read each other's body language and, and just know what's going to happen next. How do you know how to act around them? Their ears tell a lot. If her ears are pinned back, just like a typical house cat, uh, you know there's something going on. They're also very vocal. They'll let you know little little growls or little uh, grunts, but um, right now she's interested in everything that's gone, going on. So she has perked up ears, which means she's actually just interested in everything. But if her ears were really um, pinned back to her head, you know that she's probably not in the best of mood. And Cinderella is a turkey vulture. And she's important to our education program because she's one of those animals most people see from a distance and they think or find the animal repulsive because it's a vulture. Okay. And what Cinderella helps us teach the kids and the adults is that things aren't what they appear to be. Uh, and that she really is a very, very beautiful animal. And, um, and uh, she, she's actually a lot of fun as far as having a relationship with her, even though she's a vulture. So she really teaches people that not everything is as appears to be or what you've heard about them. As you can see, Cinderella is beautiful. And it's very interesting to see these animals up close rather than just seeing them in the movies or opposed to seeing them from far away. So it's a really good experience to see these animals this close and just sometimes even touch them and feel their texture. It's, uh, it's been a very fun, interesting experience so far. Coming to Wild Things is fun for all ages. The best part is that it's open for everybody to enjoy. Every day at one o'clock, we offer a tour to the public and to our bed and breakfast guests. And it's a one hour walk around the entire facility and they see and meet the animals, see how they live and see what we do with them. And then for people who wanna go a step further, they can book a private tour it can be a two hour, a four hour, or an all day tour where they actually interact with the animals. This adventure continues at our next show. We'll meet new friends and learn about an elephant sanctuary and so much more. Did you know that the lunar eclipse that occurred on December 23rd, 2010 coincided with the winter solstice? Last time that happened was in 1638. a short break when we return we'll learn about a program for kids that teaches values while playing if you have ideas suggestions or want to be featured on central coast wave please send us an email to tips at centralcoastwave.com this is the central coast wave Welcome back. And now a reporter, Carla Maciel, shows us her special report on the first tee of Monterey County, a place where kids play while learning good values and more. Let's check it out. The First Tee uh, program is an international organization, 204 chapters and five international locations right now. And our chapter came to be in November of 2004. We uh, took over the Twin Creeks Golf Course here. And in 2004, we ended that year with 53 participants in the program. We now have over 5,200 children in our program. The First Tee of Monterey County is a 63-acre, nine-hole course located in North Salinas. The facility serves the youth from the Monterey County. What the kids uh, encounter when they come here is not just the golf. The golf is the way that we make it fun. We keep them active and keep them interested while the coaches deliver the life skills. And the kids uh, today might be learning about honesty, respect, or one of our nine core values. But what they're learning are the, the life skills that they can take from the golf course to the classroom and to home. So that's what the program is all about. Golf is just the way that we make it fun and they, and they have a good time while they're here. The First Tee has partnered with the Alisal Union School District. The partnership provides the elementary schools with curriculum by offering golf classes as part of the physical education program. Often when parents bring children to the First Tee, uh, first of all, they're a little skeptical about it and a little unsure, And uh, but it doesn't take them long to become big supporters of the program. Um, some of them think first of all, oh, they're just going to go and learn to play golf. But then they realize what we're really about, being a youth development organization, and, uh, and then they just thrilled that their children are involved in something as uh, structured and as positive as this. The nine core values of the program are honesty, integrity, sportsmanship, respect,
confidence, responsibility, perseverance, courtesy, judgment. Uh, the game was a little elitist. Uh, it, 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 it was started, you know, back in Scotland for uh, the, the, the wealthy people back there and the landowners. Uh, but golf has changed and so has the world so dramatically. And, um, and now golf is for everybody. Uh, Tiger, when he came on the scene uh, many years ago, um, back in the 90s, he, he really changed the face of golf and that drew a lot of interest into the game. And, um, and then uh, coming to, to today and the, the present, um, you know, some of the parents still feel that that it's a you know a wealthy man's game, a white man's game, um, and and I think they're a little bit afraid to to, to be come involved in it. But then once they get over that fear and they see that golf is for everybody, you know, uh, r rich or, or poor or wide or thin or different colors, it just it doesn't matter. It's just a great game that will challenge yourself and, uh, and teach you some great life skills along the way. For the children that have participated in the program, Coach Rodriguez explains how it has had a positive impact in their lives. I mean, the, the progress in a lot of them is phenomenal. I mean, you, you see a lot of kids who come here never been to a golf course. You know, first thing they want to do, they see a lot of grass, they want to run around out there. And, you know, by the second, third time they come out here, they know, walk on certain areas, show respect to people, listening, having the shirts tucked in, looking like golfers. I mean, even little things like that is, is something that's kind of, you know, it, what, what, the reason we're doing this is try to see changes like that in them. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting to see uh, when you see kids come out here and, you know, first thing they do, finish their homework, then they want to go play golf, you know, and they're, they're respectful, please and thank you, and things like that. You know, th those are the things that we, we hope to see through our work.